So in this episode, I really want to talk about how to bring about a change and how to drop a sin that you feel like is practically impossible to drop. A lot of times when we try to figure out how to drop a sin, people always scare us and tell us that, oh, hellfire is so hot, you're going to have to drop this sin, you know, there's no way out, etc. And while that is something I will get into in this episode, I want to first start off by saying that there's a lot of perspectives that you need to look at when you're thinking of dropping a sin, and this is what I'm really going to get into. I'm going to start off by talking about the world. In this world, there's a lot of disbelievers. We all commit sins. We all do things. We all mess up. There's no doubt in that. However, when we're doing something that Allah has strictly said, don't do it, we are in a manner hurting ourselves. Because the thing that we tend to forget is that Allah's glory is not going to be taken away by our sins. Nothing we do is going to harm Him. However, if Allah says don't eat haram and we still eat it, whose body are we hurting? Ours. If Allah says don't go into haram relationships and we still do it, whose heart and whose soul are we hurting? Ours. And if Allah says don't take interest because the shaitan is going to try to threaten you with poverty and the thought of, you know, not succeeding in this world, who are we threatening? Ourselves. Because now we got filled up with loans, we got rent to pay, we have these things to do, and you end up coming in this circle where you physically cannot get out of it. And that's exactly why Allah tells us not to go into some of these things because once you're in them, it's like a spiral and it just continues and it continues and it continues and you physically can't stop. When it comes to a world's perspective, if you are doing, you know, not just the things I listed but all these other things, you need to realize that you're harming yourself. This isn't going to help you and it's not helping you here. It might be feel great for a few months, it's probably going great for a few years, it's going to catch up and it's going to hurt you bad and it's going to hurt your soul bad. And I know this may sound harsh, but you're not going to have any way to heal except turning back to God. Because when you disobey God's commandments, there's nobody on earth that can fix you. It's just going to be God. So you're going to have to really take the time to sit down and heal yourself as an individual and figure out where did you go wrong. But that's just from a worldly perspective. Because now, if you continue your sin and deep down in your heart you have that guilt, that guilt is a blessing from Allah, dude. Like, he's telling you, like, this ain't right, I need to drop this. And you feel that guilt every single time you're doing it, but you just struggle to drop that sin. That's, in a way, slight ignorance. It's so important to remember that you don't get caught up in your feelings. If you get caught up in your feelings and your feelings are like, well, I don't want to stop, I don't want to do this, life is going great, even while I'm committing the sin... God's maybe not that angry. I definitely want to share an example with you that you probably have seen quite a lot. Have you all ever seen when somebody converts to Islam or they were just born Muslim and, you know, society and all these other influential factors make them leave Islam and they're like, wow, I feel so much happier after leaving. You have to realize that leaving Islam is a, it's a step-by-step process. You don't wake up one day and decide, I'm done. You know, I'm leaving. That's not how it works. You commit a sin, then you commit another sin, then you're like, wow, Allah's not punishing me, life is still great, or Allah does punish you, and instead you get more drawn towards that sin out of aggression. Then you just kind of continue going and going and going, and then one day you just wake up after, you know, a few years of sin and not repenting and just not feeling a connection with God, and you're like, nah, forget this, and you just dip. You leave Islam, and you will always find that a lot of these people I've literally seen it, like, on TikTok and stuff, they'll talk about how they're so much more happier after leaving Islam and you have to think about it God set them free and sometimes freedom from God is a punishment when God sets you free from his provision and he sets you free from the religion that is the truth in a way that within itself the biggest punishment because Allah's like all right you're my servant go do what you want and at that point you're accountable for yourself you always have been but when you step out that religion it's on you and that's just on this world when it comes to the hereafter, the whole other thing, you know, we know that hell is really scary. And those who commit a sin and they don't repent, they're going to have to give their share. You know, a lot of times we hurt people, we don't make amends with them, or we can't make amends with them, our ego gets in the way, or we commit a sin. I want to remind you that if you're committing a sin for a friend, or if you're doing something for someone else, on the day of judgment, when we are all gathered, it doesn't matter if it's your family, your friends, whoever, 
they're going to be turned against you. Because when time comes and Allah is standing in front of you guys, metaphorically, and he's questioning you guys why you did what you did, ain't nobody going to care about you. It's about saving my own self. And that's just how it is. It sounds harsh, but when times get tough, that's when true people are revealed. So if you're sitting out here committing sins for other people or trying to help other people and committing sins and guiding them down that route, you will be held accountable because you also are in a cause of mislead. As of right now, let's just focus on yourself. So let's say you are committing so many sins and you don't repent. You will have to really pay for it. You will have to go through some punishments for it. And of course, I don't know specifically what you did and what Allah is going to do and how Allah views you. Because again, I'm not the all-knowing. I'm just another human. But one thing we are told in the Quran is that it's just really to be cautious your lord is merciful but your lord is not ignorant your lord is merciful but he's also not powerless and when we focus so much on his mercy which is a great thing but we completely zone out on the fact that he's also very very powerful and that in a matter of seconds we can be dropped dead on the floor dead then we start to realize that oh crap maybe i messed up somewhere a lot of times we hear about how scary hell is which is a hundred percent true but why don't we hear how beautiful heaven is? Heaven where absolutely everything you want you get. You don't gotta work. You get a big mansion. No interest. No loans. No worries. Don't gotta worry about nobody hitting your car. I know that happens quite a lot, especially on this earth. This is a random example. Somebody hits your car or your job got taken away. Something happened to your house. It's like we go through shambles and it's like shaitan is really threatening us with poverty at that moment. And the only thing that we see is like, we need to take a loan, we need to get out of here. And of course, that's a worldly example. But it's like, think about going to heaven and never have to worry about any of that. When you go to heaven and you're just like, hey God, I want this. And it will appear right in front of you when every single thing you want is right in front of you. And that within itself is beautiful because here on earth, when we want something, we got to work for it. We got to go do this. We got to do that. We got to work a nine to five, work in two shifts. It's like, it's so much work. But in heaven, after you do your religious work on this earth, you will be treated so well. And a lot of times on this earth, we are literally a slave to our desires. We're a slave to wanting to become rich. We are a slave to wanting to, you know, have this amazing business or whatever it may be. We are in a manner a slave to it. When the only slave that you should really be is towards Allah. Because when you worship Allah on this earth, which a lot of people view for enjoyment, when you realize that this earth is not a place of, of enjoyment and it's a place of getting your crap together so you can get to heaven, a lot of things change. Now I want to talk about really how you can drop a sin. A lot of the way of dropping a sin is really by perspective. It's about realizing that I cannot afford to physically be in hell i cannot physically handle having god ask me why did you do this you can't there's no way that you're going to stand in front of god and say that i was scared of the people around me more than i was scared of you so that's exactly why i did what i did you can't it's not possible besides perspective changes one physical change that i really like to do is when you feel like you're really caught up in sin you need to do this thing called the two-month trial what you're going to do in these two months is that you're going to put your freaking feelings aside. You're going to toughen up and you're going to realize that it's time to quit being a wuss. Put them feelings aside. Put them doubts aside. Take two months and stop that sin. It's going to be hard. You might go back and forth for a bit. But when you start them two months, I need you to stay consistent like it's life or death. Because it really is. You could really die any second. But you need to stay consistent on that. And I always tell myself in my brain, I'm like, all right, if I'm not pleased in these two months, then I'll see what I want to do. I can 100% guarantee you there was never a time where I wasn't pleased after those two months with the way God changed my life. When you have a sin, you drop it for two months, you're going to see how your life is without it. First month, you, probably, you might cry a lot. You might be really stressed. You might be doubtful. You might be tempted to go back. By the second you know, week or the second month, you're going to kind of notice yourself. You're like... I'm kind of building a stability towards it. I'm kind of seeing the things that I wouldn't see when I was committing that sin. A lot of times when we're doing something bad, we get so blinded that we don't even notice that it's literally hurting us. It's ruining our mental health. It's ruining our hereafter. It's ruining us as individuals. And we don't notice it. It's exactly why we need to sometimes, metaphorically, fast away from it. We need to stay away from it. We need to see what it is doing to our health. And so when you commit to this two-month plan don't commit for yourself but commit for the god that has kept you alive today 
for you to even see this day. I know a lot of people who say that I commit too many sins, so I stop repenting. I don't believe in Allah's mercy because I did this, I did that. You are standing right now saying these things while you are breathing and you are alive. There's been times when you commit a sin at Zohar time, and here you are and you made it to Isha time. You see that time frame? Allah let you live the whole day. You had all those prayers in between where you could have prayed and repented. There is opportunities. Don't miss those opportunities because you, yourself, are being a drag to your own hereafter and you know your relationship with god after these two months you might find it hard and you might consider that okay maybe i just need to take another month off from the sin and you need to do like it's a vacation you know like take take some time away from it after two or three months you will notice a change in your life because when allah tells us not to do something it is because he knows it's not good it's because it will physically hurt us there are so many things that we do that are bad and that's why there's a quran verse that goes along the lines of how allah knows what's good for us well we may think it's bad and we may think something's bad but allah knows it's good you know what i'm trying to get at so it's really important to remember that the one who knows all knowledge is there and he's going to help you but you have to make a change for yourself because Allah does not change anyone's condition until they change themselves. So if you take the two months out and you make the attempt, I promise you Allah will increase you in risk in every single aspect of your life. It's just a matter of trying. Now I'm not saying that this is going to be easy and that you know, you're going to commit it for two months and then woo, I'm done, life's great again. No, it's going to be hard. But with every single hardship, you're going to get so much reward. And you know what the most beautiful part is? If you committed a sin for 10 years and you repent, you really make sincere repentance that I'm not going to go back to this. And you ask Allah, oh Allah, turn all my bad deeds into good deeds. Them 10 years of you doing bad things are now written down as good. How amazing is that? That's literally like getting rich in the hereafter, man. And that's really what's important. Because this world will make you feel like there's so many other sins that you need to commit to feel to be fitting, you know, to feel like you need to fit in. That's not, that's not what needs to be necessary. Anyway, I do want to continue this and end it off by saying that Allah is really merciful. And when you realize that and you believe that, you will find it a lot more easier to end any sin. Because if you're alive today and you're listening to this today and you have some sin that you committed for ages, this within itself is Allah's mercy that you heard this that a sign came across you because the reality is I can't control who sees this I can't put this out on certain people's platforms Allah will make you see this if you need to see it and if you see it take this as your sign to believe that Allah is merciful that you just need to take those two months off from that sin and realize how truly how much he loves you how much he loves you that he's willing to change everything for you but first of all you're gonna have to change something in yourself anyway i hope this was helpful i'm definitely gonna try to record more episodes this was quite small i don't know how it's gonna go though but thank you so much for listening